Welcome back, Bridgewater College Teacher Education Program students. This is the last in our series of screencasts about using the rectangle model on the smart board to work with fractions. And in particular today, we're going to tackle fraction division. Before we get to fractions, let's think about just dividing one whole number by another. What does 24 divided by 3 mean? Well, it will help us today if we think of it this way. 24 divided by 3 means how many 3's do I need to make 24? And the answer, of course, would be 8. 60 divided by 12 would mean how many 12's do I need to make 60? How many dozen are in 60? And the answer, of course, is 5. Even if we involve fractions, such as how many 2's do I need to make 9? Well, obviously, you need more than 4 because 4 2's would make 8. We'd need another half, so we need 4 and a half 2's to make 9. Or how about this problem that does involve the division involving a fraction? We're going to look at this problem in a minute using the rectangle tool, but let's think of it this way. How many quarters do I need to make two dollars? And I think when we look at it that way, how many of the second number, how many of the divisor do I need to make the dividend? We would agree that the answer to this must be eight. It would take eight quarters to make two dollars. Now you've all heard the familiar expression, yours is not to reason why, just invert and multiply. Well, obviously the purpose of this screencast is not to simply give a rule to students and have them memorize the rule and be on their way. The purpose of this screencast is to show exactly how division works, in particular using the rectangle tool. So let's try getting rid of all of these. Except for that last one. Let's see if we can do this problem using the rectangle tool. I'll drag my rectangle tool up to the work area. In fact, I have two. After all, we want to say, how many fourths does it take to make two? Well, let's see if we can come up with some fourths. One way I could do this would be to determine my, what my fourths would look like. And I can do that over here to the side. And I'll just draw a rectangle divided into four equal parts. I'll get my smiley face tool, as we've done many times before, under the creative pins. And I'm asking, how many shapes like this, how many little rectangles would I need to make these two? I think we can see that if we were to divide these up, as I did the one in the upper right-hand corner, it would take eight quarters to make two. And my smiley would simply be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It would take eight of them to make two. So the answer to this problem has to be eight. Let's try another problem, and this time we'll try one that's sort of couched in a word problem. And here's the way it goes. I have two-thirds of a pound of cheese. I'm going to be making some meatballs, and the meatballs each need one-fourth of a pound for each meatball. How many meatballs can I make from my two-thirds pound of cheese? So again, the problem is I have two-thirds of a pound of cheese. I'm going to be making meatballs, and each meatball needs one-fourth of a pound, and I want to know how many meatballs. In other words, I'm asking how many of the second number does it take to make the first number? So let's start with our tool, our rectangle tool, and let's divide it into thirds. Two-thirds would obviously be the first two vertical bars. And I could color those in if I wanted to. But before I do, let's look at what one-fourth would look like. There's several ways we could do one-fourth. But I'm, I'm going to divide my rectangle into four horizontal sections. So I'm asking how many of the top row here, which is one-fourth, would I need to make two vertical bars? 
Well, it's hard to eyeball that and come up with the answer. But one way that we could solve it would be, what if I took the original two-thirds and divided that rectangle into fourths? So I could do this, and this, and this. I'll also divide my upper right-hand corner rectangle into thirds. Maybe dividing line there, dividing line here. And let's get our smiley face tool out now and, and look at what we're talking about. So here's my smiley tool. Here's the two-thirds that we began with. Remember we said the first two vertical bars were going to represent two-thirds. And the horizontal row represents one-fourth. So I'm asking how many of these do I need to make this? A trick that I find handy is to put a circle or an oval around what I'm looking for. So I'm going to grab the oval tool and I'm going to draw an oval around these three. And now I'm saying how many of these could I make from the smileys that are down here in the two-thirds section? Well, I think you can see that we could do some rearranging. I could put this guy up here and this guy up here. And now if I grab my oval tool, I can see, well, there would be one group of three. Here would be another group of three. I can't quite make the third group of three. So the answer would be two and two-thirds. How many meatballs could I make? Two and not quite enough for a third. Two and two-thirds meatballs could be made with the two-thirds pound of cheese. Two-thirds divided by one-fourth must equal two and two-thirds. Now notice I'm not using the technique of inverting and multiplying. Oh, we'll get to that technique for sure. This lesson is about making sure our students understand what division means. And then we'll see that the shortcut will be to invert and multiply. But today's lesson is not about shortcuts. Let's try another problem. This time I have some material. I have one and one half yards of material. I need to cut that into one-fourth yard strips for a project that I'm going to work on. How many strips can I make? So again, the problem is I have one and one-half yard of material. I need to cut it into one-fourth yard strips. And I need to know how many strips can I make from this. How many of the second number, the one-fourth, do I need to make the first number? So let's try this one by first starting with one and a half. There's one. And to get the half, of course, I'm going to have to divide this. So my one and a half will consist of this entire rectangle and half of the other rectangle. And just like in the previous problem, I need to look and see, what does one-fourth look like? I think this time I'll do it a little differently. This time I'll divide my rectangle all up into vertical strips. Sure enough, if I get my smiley face, now what I'm saying is, if this represents one-fourth, which it does, how many of those do I need to color in this entire block and half of the other block? And the best way to find out the answer, of course, is to divide these blocks into fourths. So let's do it. Let's put this divider up and this divider up and this divider up right in the middle. One on each side. Let's color in our one and one half. The one would be all of the vertical bars colored in. So I'm coloring in all four of these. That's one. And one half would be these two vertical bars. So I'm asking how many of these does it take to make that? Well, I think you can see it's going to take six. And if you'd like, I could put an oval around these to, to indicate how many groups of three can I make down here. Well, I could make one group of three, a second group of three, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. How many one-fourths does it take to make one and a half? It takes six. So how many strips 
can I make of material with my one and one half yard divided into one fourth yard strips? I can make six. Let's try a third example. I'm going to suppose that I have two and one third acres of land. And I would like to divide that land into half acre lots and sell them. How many lots can I sell that are a half acre in size for my original two and one third acre land? So here's the problem we're looking at. How many half acre lots does it take to make two and one third acres? Let's start by looking at what two and one third acres are going to look like. There's two. And here would be one third, the one of the vertical bars. So my land consists of this rectangle, this rectangle, and a third of this rectangle. And I'm asking about how many half acre lots. Let's look and see what a half acre lot would look like. I think I'll use the horizontal dividing tool. I'll color with my smiley faces and say I need to know how many of these does it take to make up this area down here. Well, I think it'll be easier for us if we divide the top rectangle into thirds and the bottom rectangles, all three of them, into thirds and halves. So let's start by dividing the top rectangle up into thirds. So I'm asking how many of these does it take to make the area down here represented by two and one third. Let's get our dividers up. We'll divide this into half as well as the first one. And we'll divide them each into thirds as well. Now I think we can see the answer. Let's use our smiley face and color in two. That's one. Here's two, and here's one third. How many of this group can I make from what's down below? I use my oval tool again, and I can say, well, there's one group, here's another group, a third, a fourth, but I can't quite make the fifth. So how many lots can I sell? I can sell four lots but not quite the fifth one. Two-thirds divided by one-half is going to equal four and two-thirds. Notice that's two parts of the three that I need, two-thirds. Okay, this concludes our look at division of fractions using the rectangle model on the smart board. I certainly hope you'll have plenty of opportunities in your classrooms to use this model to show all the operations with fractions equivalence, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I hope these screencasts have been useful for you and that you understand fractions a little bit better now so you can make sure that your students do likewise. See ya!